Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad. The scripture says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us, glory to God, let us, you on the Facebook, let us, those in the sanctuary, let us worship his name together. We come to give him praise. We come to give the Lord glory. We tell, come to tell the enemy, you have no place in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Let's just give God a little praise. Yeah. Thank you. He has been so good to us. Thank you, God. Woo. If it had not been for him, where would we be? God, we thank you. Good morning, our family and Facebook friends. I am Overseer M. Alexander. If this is your first time visiting either here in person or virtually, and you are wondering who we are, let me tell you who True Vine Church is. We are a church that is seeking to minister to the whole person. We are a church that believes in mission and making an impact in our community. Our motto is, come on, we are a church that is word fed and spirit led yes we are we want to welcome you today to true vine church worship service if you are a returning friend god bless you and we celebrate you if you are a disciple of true vine we love you and we honor you if you are listening to us via facebook please put in the comment box and tell us who you are and what state city or country you are in We've had people from over in Canada and all over across the world. Come on, let your people know. Text them right now. Like, share this page. Let's prepare ourselves for a move of God. Amen. In our worship. Come on, come on, come on. We're going to give God some praise and give God some glory. Worship team. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Y'all ready to worship this morning? Get my stuff. I got more than enough. 
time to worship our God and that the river of our worship flows to Jesus because he is so good he is so mighty he is so kind so God let all of our worship and let all of our praise God let it flow to you God we honor you in this place and we say thank you for being our God because you are so worthy to be praised hallelujah
For you, for you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then will I ever sing in praise of your name and fulfill my vows day to day. I read to you Psalm 61 in its entirety. May the Lord have a blessing upon the hearing, readers, and doers of his word. Good morning. The New Testament today is coming from the book of Romans. I am using an example from everyday life because you, your human limitations, just as you use to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness. So now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves in sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin, 
and have become slaves of, of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I have read to you Romans 6 chapter, verses 19 through 23. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have a praise in the house today? Hallelujah. Have God done something for you today? All this week we've been blessed. We even got caught. God heard us and our cry. He sent us some cool weather. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's something to shout about. Glory to God. Well, God, we thank you and we praise you. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be made glad in it. We shall acknowledge you from on high and we shall shout on the mountaintops. Hallelujah. Bless God. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, Woo! for rescuing us today, God. We thank you, God, for all your many blessings. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you, God, for your tender mercies that endure and last to all generations. We thank you, God, that we are your people and the sheep of your pasture, that you are our God. It is you that have made us and not we ourselves. So today, God, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand and we say, God, we shall praise you. We shall praise you. We shall praise you. And we shall lift up the name of Jesus in this sanctuary. And we shall be blessed because of your goodness and your mercy. So we thank you, God, for the word that is going to go forth today. Your word, God, that's going to encourage us and build us up. As you said, it will edify us as your word is spoken today in love. Let it be seasoned with salt, God. Let it be filled with your goodness, God, that we would know that is straight from you. So, God, have your way in the midst of your people. We bind up every prideful spirit. We bind up every shameful spirit. And we loose your people to be free to lift up their hands in your sanctuary, to lift up their voices in your sanctuary, to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. So we bless you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have you sit down in a minute, but I want us to say, because this is still a, an extension of worship. When I say, what time is it? You're going to say, it's kingdom investment time. My needs are met time. For those of you who are new or have not heard it. Hello, everyone on Facebook. What time is it? It's investment time. My needs are met time. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Many times we don't see giving as a form of worship or an extension of worship. And I think it's really funny how when the work, the praise and worship is going, most times we are all in it. We clap it and we praise it. And then when it comes time for giving, we just kind of sit there and look like, oh, it's time to give. But you know what? You know, it is kingdom investment time. It, we investing in the kingdom of God. You cannot beat God giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give with a happy heart, with a willing heart, giving is in relationship to God and not just giving, just to be uh, doing the motion of giving. But when God sees that, he will pour out his blessing. He will open up the windows of heaven and pour out that blessing that you will not have room enough room enough to receive it. And he will touch others' hearts to give into your lives in ways that you have not known. And when you give to the kingdom of God, if you need an envelope, if you could please raise your hand. I wanted to read something that Bishop 
put on Twitter a while back, and it says, excellence and expectations travel together. Excellence begins internally and is manifested externally. You want to achieve excellence, raise your expectation level. Amen. Amen. So when we want something for God, when we are expecting something from God, we have to raise our expectation level. We have to get God out of the box. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we have God in this little bitty box, just like my little self. We have gotten this box in our minds when God wants to do so much more for us, more than what we can even imagine or think. Amen. Amen. And as you give today, give with the high expectation, with the expectation of excellence. Raise your expectation today that for what God, what do you believe in God to do in your life? Nothing's too hard for our God. Amen. 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 If you are ready to give uh, by ways you can give is you can give for those of you here you can either give in your envelope or you can text five to five four two four four that's five four two four four and type tvc in the body of the text a link will come up and you can give that way or you can give by cash app the cash app is a dollar sign true vine as a or you can give uh, by mail uh, 1357 Rice Road, San Antonio, Texas, 78220, 1357 Rice Road, San Antonio, Texas, 78227. Amen. Our PayPal is paypal.me slash True Vine Church SA. Again, the PayPal is paypal.me True Vine Church SA. Amen. You ready to give? Amen. My needs are met. I'm out of debt. I have more in store for the kingdom of God. Amen. And now we will have the introduction of our speaker today. Praise God. We want to give some, um, a few announcements before we introduce our speaker. Um, tomorrow we have a, our CAN meeting at six o'clock here at True Vine Church. I can at six o'clock. Also want to share. Um, also, if you have not got a chance to see our women's conference, it is now on YouTube. I'm sure they'll put it in the chat. You are one of, going to want to um, view this and like and share and subscribe and let other people know our women's conference was beautiful. The anointing of the lowers here, our speakers, and just everything just flowed so wonderful. So we just thank you. Um, and today we were going to be having our youth do their, their skit on the timeline, but they have changed it, the timeline of Jesus, but it has been pushed back to the fourth Tuesday, the fourth Sunday of next month. Amen. All right. Can we clap for our overseer? Clap for her, clap for her. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. I have the wonderful opportunity to introduce the speaker for this morning. Um, there's so many things that I have already said about our bishop, my father, um, that I don't mind repeating because they're all true. Uh, my bishop is hilarious. Let me tell y'all why. Because 
I don't care if it was yesterday or 10 years ago, this man can tell a story as if it just happened and will crack up every time he tells the same story. That is, that is a gift, okay? That is a gift. And he keeps it almost the same every time. Every now and then he'll throw a little extra parts that we didn't think we had caught the first time. So he'll throw it again to see if we caught it the second time. I'm like, that was a different story. That's a different story. Hold on. Wait. Oh, that's it. Okay. So he does these things, right? But he does it in a way where it's like, okay, like our bishop likes to tell stories. And I just think it's the cutest little thing. Um, and so we were having family time to celebrate his birthday um and one of we were playing the five second rule game i don't know if y'all play that game and my bishop decided to tasha was doing the the questions to everybody and i think it was what are the three things that you shouldn't buy for a, for a gift or something <laughs> and my bishop yelled out a diamond ring and busted out laughing <laughs> and then i looked at him <laughs> because it was a story that popped in his mind as soon as he said it and cracked his own self up. <laughs> and as many of y'all have known, my bishop has told the story about how one of my exes got me a friendship ring um, that he didn't know about. And so he went into a whole random telling the story to the people that were already there for that whole story <laughs> and cracked up. Like, I tell you, this man has a gift, okay? Like, I love my bishop. He is hilarious. Um, and he, but he likes to have fun. And that's important. When you have a bishop doesn't mind having fun to get you excited about the word of God, it's a beautiful thing to see. So I tell you to be prepared to laugh, even probably say, ouch, because he has a way of stepping on your toes without knowing it until after service. So be prepared just to be in an experience of worship in the way that God has it for us. Amen. So everybody, please stand. And I want you to clap for my bishop, <laughs> Bishop Trevor Dean Alexander. <laughs> I said to Kanija, we're going to ban her for introducing me. <laughs> she tells it all. Yeah, yeah, I did crack my own self up, but it, it, I didn't even finish the question. It's supposed to name three things. I named one, and a story flashed across my mind. I was like, ha! <laughs> I did it. I couldn't stop it. Uh, I lost that round, <laughs> but it's okay. It was a good loss. It was a good loss, because you were cracking up too. Yeah, praise God. Hey, man, I just tried to get uh, Elder Owens to bet with me that when she gets up, she can mention my age. He said, that's a sucker bet. You should have bet me. Because <laughs> she didn't do it this time. So of course of that, I'm going to keep you around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I want to thank God for all of you for the birthday wishes and, and the cards and the gifts and all of that. It was just so much appreciated. Um, this is really the first one we had outside of COVID. So we're just so, so good to celebrate and to play cards. Um, one of the persons we play cards with is here. The other one got hurt so badly they had to leave the state. Yeah, I'm talking about Brother Michael. He, 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 uh, but the other one who lost badly, right over there. Nephew, the way you look around, nephew. <laughs> yeah, you lost. You lost. They, 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 were about to get, they were about to get set, but it isn't really, you know, let's call it 300 before we get, you know, save that, save your, save your dignity. Praise God. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Just celebrating and food was good. Just good fellowship. I also want to recognize, I believe my auntie's on. She don't put nothing in the, in the chat, but I know she's watching. So auntie, I see you. Well, not really, but I know you on. <laughs> And to nephew, praise the Lord, nephew. All right, nephew. All right. And uh, we want to recognize that on the 24th of this month is Pastor Charles's birthday. Yeah. What, what number is that? 76? A six, 76, 77. I, I don't know which one he is, but 
He's in, he's, in, he's in the middle of the seventies, so um, we want to recognize him. So if you can, give him a call and wish him well. And if you don't have his number, see me afterwards, and I'll gladly give it to you. I don't want to put it on the air because I don't know who's going to be who's watching. So if you're tomorrow, you can spend the part. Yeah, if you come tomorrow, please come at the, our um, I can Interfaith Community Action Network. We're gathering to f- find ways where various churches, I believe, twenty six churches, are gathered where we can be the church in the community. And so we're going to exchange ideas and how we can get back to being whom God has called us to be. So if you don't have thing tomorrow at 6.30-ish, 6.30, 6 o'clock. I don't know. Six o'clock. Thank you, Administrative Assistant. Six o'clock. Just come on out. We won't be here long, but we're going to get some ideas. We already started putting ideas together, but we're going to figure out how we can be this church emerging out of this pandemic. Amen. See Brother Williams with us this morning. When you walked in, did my heart. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. All right. Y'all ready for the word? Oh. Come on. You want to do a shout out? Yes. Okay. Mike and Mike, well, MGM. <laughs> I just want to give a so I want to give a shout out to my grandma, my grandmother Sanaida Maria Aguilar, celebrating her 80th birthday today. All right, all right, all right. 80th birthday. Praise God. That, that's something to celebrate. Yes, it is. Something to celebrate. Amen. Y'all ready for the word? Yeah. I'm ready for the word. All right. I want to holler and celebrate my daughters. Yeah, how would I said my daughters, my Tara, my Tasha, my Tanya, because they were good. That's right. And I also want to recognize and celebrate the woman that makes my liver quiver and my spleen. Oh, yeah, well, squeaky clean. <laughs> I miss Brother Joseph, man. Brother Joseph, he just has a way of saying that. And did y'all see how he sprung up the other day when he said he just jumped straight on up? I'm like, I didn't know he had that much pump in him, man. <laughs> but uh oh. Okay, see that sounds like <laughs> you never know. All right, y'all ready for the word? You're ready for the word, Mister. Ezekiel chapter sixteen. All right. Ezekiel chapter sixteen, verses sixteen. See, uh, Ezekiel sixteen nine through no six through nine, verses six through nine. And I want to talk to you on. The topic, live, live. This is the first time in my 34, 35 years in ministry, I have ever preached from a one word title. I was like, God, I'm trying to be, you know, when you get a word and you're trying to be fancy with it, come up with something real nice and catchy. And every time I've come up with something catchy, because I was like, okay, let's, you shall live again. No, God said live. I said, okay, that's what you want. That's what you get, because you're the Lord. That's us. That's how we do it. We talk that way. You're the Lord. I'm just going to follow you. You know? All right. Y'all ready? ready. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 9. I mean, verse 6 says, And when it came to pass, and when I passed by you, I saw you struggling in your own blood. I said to you, in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you, in your blood, live. I can stop right there. Matter of fact, I'm going to stop right there. Because that's it. Y'all may be seated. That is so powerful. Here he comes. Oh, you missed it, Brother Joseph. You missed it, man. You had to... <laughs> Amen. <laughs> live, 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 live. This passage is a story of Israel's sin and unfaithfulness towards God. This passage is filled with symbolic language. You got to read all of 16 to fully comprehend all of the symbolic language associated with this text. Um, This language points, the symbolic language points beyond itself and oftentimes takes you deeper into the meaning of the text. All right. So my, 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 my task today, my task is to simply speak life to you and to say, God said, God, live. live, live. As I mentioned, I've never 
preach from a one word title before. I even verified my wife to say, hey, have I ever done that? She said, no. So today is my first. But the message from the text speaks for itself. Live. So let me give you some historical um, backdrop to this. Judah is taken into captivity and God is upset with Judah because Judah is not responding to captivity like God wanted them to. Um, Nebuchadnezzar had taken a groups of people from their homeland and took them to the Babylon and they were praying for God to do something immediately. Now, you will say, well, that's what I would do if I was taken into captivity. But you need to understand that the reason why they wanted to for God to move immediately is because they believed they were God's favorite. And then God showed them that favor. It was the attitude of why they wanted God to move. The reason they went into captivity is because they were disobedient to God and their hearts were turning from God. And in captivity, their hearts were supposed to turn back to God, but they were not turning back to God. But their attitude was, God, do this thing because, you know, we, you know, we are right. I'm your boy. I'm your, I'm, I'm your girl. This do me that favor without me doing anything that um, requires you to respond to my need. Am I doing? Okay. All right. And so, so they had this false sense of hope. They, they had a false sense of security because they believed they were God's favorite and they could do no wrong. Um, in this captivity, they were supposed to have their heart turn. They were supposed to return back to God. But when you are wrong, Come on now. you know you're wrong, but just because of who you are, you don't think you need to repent. Okay, that just went over somebody's head. When you're married, and you know you messed up in your marriage. Okay, let me not go there then. When you're dating, Come on, Bishop. and you messed up in your, in your date, because everybody's saying, don't be looking at me, man. And, and, and you know you don't messed up. Ah. Right? And you, you, you're supposed to, you know, maybe, okay, I, let me stop. When I, me, 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 <laughs> me, because y'all is looking like I'm crazy. When I mess up. All right, sir. Elder, you so nice, Grant. I'm better today. But I used to do this. I know I messed up. But I got to say, I'm, I'm sorry. But she should know I'm sorry. Because I messed up. So I, I used to um, make 15 trips to the kitchen. You want something? What do you want? I get it for you. Want some coffee? I'll make it some fresh. I'll make it fresh. Make it fresh. <laughs> right? That's just my way of smoothing things out. So I don't have to say, I'm sorry. Because I know she's going to love me, right? Because I'm just lovable. <laughs> I know she's going to respond, but then she gives me that look. Yeah, that, that, that's the look that says, you know you got to <clears throat> you got to say something before we go to sleep tonight. And I know I got to say it, but I really don't want to. Because if I say it, that's an admission that I was wrong. But I knew I was wrong. All right, Bishop. All morning long, all day long. And I'm being putting off of saying, I'm sorry. Okay. See, I see none of y'all have ever done that before but me. It's okay. That, I own it. That's the state of mind that Judah was in. They were wrong. They were thought they were God's favorite. They said, God, I don't need to repent because you know my heart. Oh, did I just hit somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. God know my heart. Yeah. You know that we use that line so much. God knows my heart. He does. But you also know the right thing to do. And, 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 and so they were supposed to turn back to God and, and, and repent, but they didn't do that. So they heard that Jerusalem, that after a long siege, was destroyed. And 
If Jerusalem is destroyed, that means the temple is destroyed. Something begins to stir in them because if the temple is destroyed, the temple that represents God, the presence of God, if that's destroyed, that means God may have abandoned them and they started losing hope. Enters Ezekiel. Ezekiel begins to give them a word that basically says two things. Y'all need to grow up and y'all need to fall back in love with God. You have to read all of 16 to get that. You need to grow up and you need to fall back in love with God. Ezekiel uses some very prophetic language that basically says you need to remember who you are, remember whose you are, and how you got to become who you are. Right. He uses language that calls them to remember. God sends Ezekiel to the people with a word to awaken them. When you start losing hope, something happens to you and you begin to windle away. God said, I didn't allow captivity to happen to you so you can dwindle. I allow captivity to happen to you so you can turn back to me and I can show you again who I am. Yes, sir. Uh, Ezekiel calls them to remember who they are, who they are, and how they became who they are. And Ezekiel reminded them that God has entered into covenant with them. All right. And God has kept it his part. But you got to do your part. So that's the historical content. Let me move into the, uh, the content that is before us today. And I did not read for your hearing um, Ezekiel 16 and 3, but let me read it now. This is a condition of the content. Okay. Ezekiel 16 and 3 says... Your origin and your birth are from the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother was a Hittite. Yes, sir. Now, for those of you who say, like, okay, wait a minute, I thought they were Jews. They were, but understand their origin was Abraham and Sarah. All right. Abraham was an Amorite and Sarah was a Hittite. They came together and formed the Jewish nation. But God, through Ezekiel, is reminding them of their origin. Let me see if I can work this out. Um, he wanted to know. Now, sometimes you can't understand where you're going till you know from whence you came. Right, Ezekiel gives them a word and he says, um, your mama and your pappy came together. But he specifically mentions their origin. Let me give you 16 and 4 because this, this is going to blow your mind. All right. It's in the word. As for your origin, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. All right. Nor were you washed in water to cleanse you. You were not rubbed with salt nor wrapped in swaddling clothing. He said, this is your condition. Your mother and your father were Amorites and Hittites. Mm -hmm. And when you were born, your umbilical cord was not cut mm -hmm. and you were not cleaned up. All right. Look at the image that God, that God is using through Ezekiel. And basically the Alexander translation says, they did not do for you what they did for others. Okay, that, that, that was... Other people were born they cut the umbilical cord. They clean them up. But you, Judah, they didn't do nothing with you. They, they, they just mistreated you. Let me dig a little deeper. Um, in other words, Judah, you need to understand you got some stuff in your ancestry that you're still connected to. Okay, you didn't get that. Your mama and your father were Hittites and Amorites. Yes, sir. When you were born, they didn't cut the cord. That means we still got some generational stuff yeah. that's still attached to us. Yes, that's why you're in the condition you're in. All right, all right. Oh, man. 
I'm trying to get, um, I don't want to get too happy too fast. Because some of us are where we are, who we are, acting like we are, because we still got some stuff to us, because we didn't cut the umbilical cord. Oh, Jesus. Um, Judah, Judah, you're in captivity because you were rebellious. You were disobedient. Uh, but you came from an Amorite and a Hittite. So to in order to understand, let me give you a very quick characteristics of these folks. All right. Amorite was a very fierce warrior nation. Amorites were known for being tall, especially their men. They were tall men. Amorites were strong and mighty warriors. But their downfall was they believe in, uh, they were a polytheistic nation, Asian, uh, nation. They believe in many gods. Even though God was trying to get the one God, they kept believing in many gods. That means there was a rebelliousness in that nation. Uh, the Hittites were skilled iron warriors. They were one of the first to have chariots. Now, some would say they invented the wheel. I, I, I don't know if that's true, um, you know, but they used the wheel and they put it on this chariot that they were called chariots and the chariots, they used them effectively and they were one of the first nations to use chariot as part of their warrior nation, uh, of their armory. And they conquered many, many tribes because they had an advantage on them, which led to a sense of pride. Hmm. Hmm. You got rebelliousness in you, you got pride rising up in you. And it says that one of their down, the, the demise of the, of the Hittites where we believe they experienced a deficiency of nutrition. Somewhere, I think they, they, they were saying there was a famine and the, they, they, the, they, the army was not um, supplied enough for the, the food that was needed to nourish them. So when they went into war, they went to war weak and discouraged. They were strong people. They were prideful people. So your origin is you got some warrior stuff in you. All right. You got some pride in you, but you got some rebellious stuff in you. Right. And it's still attached to you because your umbilical cord was not cut. All right. Mm. What's in your roots? Uh -huh. uh, what is in the, your root that pops up? And every time you do something, you want to know why you do it. Uh, it's, 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 it's maybe because you, you, you a new creature in Christ, but you ain't cut that umbilical cord. We could, there's some old things that are passing away, but this is some stuff every now and again that springs up and it reminds of you, like, where that come from? Do think about me sometimes because I got some stuff that's in me and I'll be like, oh, where did that come from? When I, then, then you go back and, you know, I, I believe in Pastor Jeff, so I think it was Jeff, so we got to spend some time with them old folks because them old folks have the history that we may not know. And sometimes listen to the stories that are being told, you wonder why you act like who you are, you got some stuff still attached to you. I'm not doing okay? So they, they would, they, these these tribe of Judah are in captivity because they're rebellious, full of pride. <laughs> and let me tell you why you that way, Judah. Your mama and your papa came from these tribes. And you wonder why you're still acting like that? Because they didn't cut the umbilical cord. So let me, so we got the, the condition. Let me get to the, condi the context of the blood. Look at a graphic image God uses. He says, I saw you struggling, struggling <laughs> in your own blood. Yeah. And in your blood, it mentioned in, the, in verse six, the word blood is mentioned three times in one verse. Anytime God mentions something more than once, he try and get your attention. Yeah. Let me give you an example. Simon, Simon, <laughs> the devil wants to sift you like wheat, but I pray for that your faith fail not. Simon, Simon, twice. 
about this one. Psalms uh, 146, I mean, 146 and one. Praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Oh, my soul. Wait a minute. That's twice. That means God wants to get our attention. Let me give you Proverbs 6 and 16. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. Suddenly, followed by suddenly. God is trying to get your attention. So when he uses the word blood three times in one verse, God is getting our attention. So let me see if I can break this down. The, The hearers of this word would have the imagination of three things. First, the blood associated with giving birth. All right. It mentions Abraham and Sarah, yes. your birth. The blood associated with birth. God said, I saw you in your blood struggling. Yes, sir. You came out of the birth canal it was bloody, it was messy, and you were struggling. Okay, I can't get in there. Hmm. But after you came out, they left you in your blood. They didn't try to clean you up. They just mishandled you. When you born, you're bloody. It's up to those taking care of you to clean you up. Yes, sir. But look how they mishandled you. One, that didn't cut the umbilical cord, and two, that left you in your mess. And you run around here trying to be somebody because you think you're somebody, but you're messy. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. Let me see if I clean it up. Every time you see stuff going on in your job, you're in the middle of stuff. Every time there's a gossiping rumor somewhere around, your name in there somewhere. <laughs> you don't have to watch as one, as, one, as the world turns and one light to live. What's some? I don't know those soap operas. Whatever those are, you don't have to watch it. You in it because you're just messy. And the reason you're messy, you got messy people you, you in your family that you pattern your life after. Help us, God. You didn't cut the umbilical cord. You got some stuff attached to you, and you acting just like them. Oh, okay. Well, I, I forgot to give the, the warning. I should forget the disclaimer. This message is not for the weak of heart. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Okay, I gave it now. They left you in your mess. You came out of the birth canal messy. They looked at you and left you messy. The second um, image that comes to mind with this blood, the blood is associated with the Passover. All right. When you put the blood on the doorposts, the angel of death would have to pass by. And everybody that was inside there received mercy because they were covered by the blood. The blood represents safety and security. Well, what happens when your safety net falls out? Huh? Jerusalem is destroyed. The temple's destroyed. Your safety net just fell out from under you. They left you messy. They didn't cut the umbilical cord, and now the safety of the covenant of the blood is in question. The third thing, image that comes to mind that's associated with the blood is circumcision. So you got what? The burden, you have the Passover, and now you have circumcision. So in circumcision, it's associated with, with what? Uh, the cutting of skin. The cutting of skin means some pain and some blood. But the cutting of skin also means covenant. In the birthing, they left you bloody. In the Passover, the temple was destroyed. Your covenant uh, may be in question. Your Satan is gone. Now the circumcision that is there. Okay, I, I can't get too graphic. But every time a man gets up to take care of business, he's reminded of the covenant, but he's also reminded that there's something 
gone wrong. So every time he looks, he reminds of the covenant, but the covenant don't look to be intact. All right. Okay. okay. Hmm. Every time I get up to do something, I look, I see evidence that once was that is no longer. Okay, did, did, did that, he got me. So every time I hold the covenant in my hand, it's a reminder that the covenant may not be intact like I want it to be. Okay, I gotta get, y'all can pray right here. If the covenant in the marriage is not intact, and I say this, whenever you get to the intimacy, All right. the covenant is not intact. It's a reminder that something wrong. My, my, my. You can be intimate and still not have covenant. Oh, oh. Boy, I need to pray. At the end of the day, yeah, you got climax, but not satisfaction. Oh, Jesus. Brandon, you ain't praying hard enough, I can tell. Climax, but not satisfaction. You say, what's the difference? I can have satisfaction in the climax, but not satisfaction in the relationship. Because the covenant is not intact. So every time they get up to hold it in their hand, they realize that something is not right. Am I doing okay? <sighs> Thank you. Because <laughs> that, that was hard. I, I got down to this one and said, how am I going to preach this, Lord? <laughs> but it's in the text. It's in the text. So we, we, we don't got to the, 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 the historical. We got to the context of the blood. Can I now get to the context of God's viewpoint? That's I'm bringing home. This I'll bring it home. So the language shifts in this text, right? It shifts from past event, telling about who their power father was. It shifts from, from them not cutting the umbilical cord. He's now giving them some hope. Ezekiel paints this image of, of Judah. And he says, you look, people treat you as you're some nobodies. Right, right. You're in captivity. They treat you as a, a nobody. Uh, um, they treat you and disrespected you because you were once up there, but now you're down here. And the people who down here look down upon you because you're no longer up there. All right, all right. Come on. You, you got demoted. And the people that you used to supervise are now supervising you. My God. And they're disrespecting you because they no longer see you as their boss. Am I? Mm -hmm. They treat you as if you had no value. Judah was once a people, now you're not a people. I hear Peter, 1 Peter 2 and 10 says, which in times past you were not a people, but are now a people of God, which had no who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Because you didn't know what it was to be merciful, now that you got it, you are people again. Okay. And Judah, because they've been mistreating you, because they treat you like you have no value, I'm coming to give you some hope. All right, now. Uh, Judah, despite of the people who mishandled you, and understand some of these people who mishandled you is also trying to shape your future. Wow, that just, you just missed that one. In captivity, the captors are trying to shape the future of those in captivity. So when the people mishandle you that try to treat, shape your future, everything they speak into you is not good. Huh. Judah, people may have mishandled you, left you in your mess, and discarded you as a piece of trash. And when people find you in your trash days, they leave you there because you look like a hot mess and they want nothing to do with you. Let me, let me put this. Because they didn't clean you up. When people see you, you look messy. 
Every time we see messy people, we walk away from them. All right. And God is saying, don't pay attention to their messiness. Try, they're trying to make you messy. I got a word for you that's going to transform your life. I'm, I'm getting that. People may have mishandled you and treat you like you're nobody, yeah. trying to determine your future based off their assessment. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks be to God. Yeah. He doesn't make a determination of your assessment based off of their assessment. He makes a determination on your assessment, on his assessment of who you are. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ezekiel said that God saw you where others saw you, but God saw you differently. Yes, sir. <laughs> I feel good right here. He said that they saw you in mess. All right. God saw you in mess. And this is how you know that God saw you differently. He said, live. That's it. That's it. That's it. Others saw you messy and said, die. God said, I saw you. I said, live. Yeah. They saw you messy, but I saw you differently. Oh, uh, miss me. And so God says to Ezekiel, no matter how people see you, no what concern is how I see you. Uh, this, let me read six again. When I, when and when I passed by you, I saw you struggling in your own blood. I saw you in your blood live. Yes, I said, in your blood live. Amen. They saw you bloody and spoke death. I saw you bloody and said live. Hmm. I said live. So from the standpoint of God, where others saw you as no hope, God said, I see hope in you. Where others wrote you off, God said, I don't write you off because I speak destiny. I speak life. I speak you shall live. Right, right. Uh, so from the viewpoint of God, he saw you as he intended to see you, how he made you. Let me, let me, let me try and modernize this. Therefore, the grace of God, go I. Us, us, some of us have been messier than others. And if you met me in my messy days, you would have said, oh my God, who in the world chose him to lead some people? And you know why I gotta say this, Stephen? This one blows my mind. He hooked me up with a woman who saw me in my messiness and still loved me anyhow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, <laughs> I was messy. Sean, messy. So messy that she met me in my messiness, broke and disgusted and still loved me. And began to speak life. <laughs> Struggling. In my mess, saw me messy. But me, here's, here, let me clean this up a little bit. I was so messy, I was so good. Okay. I can charm my way out and into stuff, and I control the situation. I was so messy, I was good. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all don't know. <laughs> I ain't gonna mention uh, the little baby's name, but she's associated with Steve-O and Mrs. Steve-O. She's so cute. She just grabs you by the hand and you just follow wherever she leads. Took the ox seeking by the hand. Wanted to get the mom. She leading, he just a following. <laughs> She messy, cause she want to get to mama, but she gonna use him to get to mama. Come on now, I ain't call no names. <laughs> Sometimes you so cute, and others know that you using them because they so cute. It is far along. Oh come on now, y'all just act like this is the first time you've ever seen it done. You did it too. You were messy. You turned on the charm. People responded to your charm, but at the end result, you were trying to get your own way. Uh huh. Messy. 
<laughs> we miss you. We miss you. Anyway, but God said, I looked beyond your mess and I called you who you are. God said, you shall live. From so the viewpoint of God, you shall live. Judah, you shall live. True vine, you shall live. No matter what others say about you, I have the last word, and my word is live. Live, live. 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 Uh, others speak death in your situation. God speaks life, and his word is live. Saints of God, I come here. One, one thing I got to do today is declare the word of the God, and the word of God is just one word, live. Yeah. Uh, you may think you have the last word, but God always has the last word. And those sometimes you come in, into a situation and those around you say you ain't never going to mount up to nothing. You'll never be nothing. Your daddy was nothing. Your mama was nothing. Now, guess what? God said, remind them that David, they mishandled David. They mistreated David, but David became a king. When people mishandle you and tell you a nobody, say, hey, David was a nobody. He became a king. Uh, or what about those that tried to shape your destiny? And plotting your future. Put you in a pit, thinking that was your demise. They did it to Joseph. Guess what? Joseph rose up and became second in command. What about those who fired you, said you're not company material? You don't have what it takes. They fired Walt Disney. Told Disney he had no, didn't have an ounce of creativity. Seriously, go back and read his story. He got fired. And they told me he had no creativity. Walt Disney. Man, dead and gone. And people are still trying to get to Disney well. <laughs> if, if that's not creativity, because Walt Disney did not allow somebody to tell him who he was. God said, live. Ezekiel informed Judah that God saw them in their condition, and he gave them one word, and that's live. It's important to understand that God has one word for you today, and that one word is you shall live. Your condition does not speak to who you are. Matter of fact, if you allow your condition to speak to who you are, you wouldn't be here today. All right, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Here's, let me say this. Sometimes the change you need and the change you're looking for can be tied up in one word. And that one word is live. 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 Others spoke damage, negative words over you. God said, I just got one word. And that one word is Live. Others try to shape your future by telling you your destiny and your destiny did not match who you was. And God says, I'm going to give you one word to cancel everything that was, every negative word that was spoken over your life. And that one word is live. Okay, I'm closing right now. I'm getting ready to go to my seat. See, he said one. <laughs> One word from God can put you back on your feet. Yeah. One word from God can provide hope yeah. when it's hopeless. Yeah. One word from God can cause you to see uh, that the capability that's in you that you, didn't know was, that, that you did not know what was in you until God spoke it in you. Yeah. One word from God can cause you to rise up, walk out of the door, and open your mouth and tell others about a great God that you serve. Right, right. One word from God can pick you up, turn you around, put your feet on a solid rock, and you begin to be the people of God. One word from God, one word, one. one word from God can cause you to walk into your destiny when your destiny looked blocked. One word. And that one word from God is simple. It's not long. It's, it don't, matter of fact, you can be the worst speller in the world and spell this one word, L-I-V-E, live. live. Because when you begin to live for God, doors will open for you. When you begin to live for God, things that was no longer in your, in your prayer view that looked like was beyond your, your grabs, God will move it closer to you. Let me give you this, this definition. When God gives you one word and you start walking and moving in the direction that God places you, that what was further away becomes closer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One word. And that word is live. live. Come on there, overseer.
Amen. Come on, let's clap. Live. My God, live, 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 live. I don't know what you're going through today and you may feel like, oh, golly, but live. Don't give up. Don't stay in isolation. We talked about that today. You find yourself in isolation today. I, I challenge you. Remind yourself, live. You got purpose. Yeah, you may feel like, you know, I'm going through something. Acknowledge that, but live. Come on and be connected to the body of Christ. Come on over here to True Vine where we can worship together. Praise God. Those in the sanctuary to stand, those who are watching us on Facebook, if you want to stand where you are, you can too, but we're getting ready to go before the throne of grace. Just telling God, thank you. God, that he loves us so much. He came to send a word to remind us, live to hold our heads up. Yes, we've been through some mess. Yes, we've been through some hard times. Yes, we've been through this pandemic and we're coming out of this pandemic. But in the spite of that, live. Encourage you. My God, thank you, Bishop, for that word. Come on, let's clap one more time. My God. To be used of the Lord. So just want to speak to three people. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord today, Today is your day. Say, God, I heard this word and I'm a sinner, but I need you. You're going to help me to, to repent and I give myself to you. And God, that you can make that old person that, and I can become new and have a new creation in Christ Jesus. And he'll help you to live because you can't do it without Christ. So I speak to you. If you don't have that relationship and you desire a relationship, put in the chat, I want a relationship with the Lord. And I pray for those today that are going through some things. And as uh, Minister Reed was just talking about it. You're going through drama. You're going through isolation. You're going through some things and you heard this word. It's time to come out of that. And it's uncomfortable. It's actually kind of scary. And if that's you today, I want to speak to you. God has a plan for you. The enemy wants to keep you stuck. The enemy wants to keep you in isolation, thinking that uh, no one wants to, you're not important. You're not valuable and, and you have no purpose. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. God made you with a purpose. Praise God. And if there's someone that just needs prayer, if that's you in the sanctuary, you can raise your hands. We'll be praying for you as well. Amen. So I see your hands. I see your hands. So Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. We, we thank you, God, for you are a God that loves us. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. God, we thank you for this word. My God, I don't care if we've had generational curses of people doing this and that. God, and we feel like we're just like the people of Oh, God, I thank you today. You reminded us that you can cut that cord and we'll be a part of your DNA, that you can give us life. God, thank you for life. Thank you for your blood that covers us in the name of Jesus. So I thank you for those who said, God, I want that relationship with you. God, I want to be reconnected with you, God. Thank you. You reminded that you're married to the backslider. No matter what I've done, no matter what I've chosen, but God, today I repent. Renew me, reconnect me to be in the family of God. God, then I pray for those who are going through um, infirmities, different things in their body, different illnesses, God. It may be physically, psychologically, God. It may be mentally, whatever that may be. God, you are the great physician. God, there is nothing too hard. God, the things that are seen to be dead in our life, God, you can breathe on them and bring back life. God, I speak to those tumors, those things of arthritis, things are going on in our bodies, headaches and different things. God, we speak to that place. Oh, my God. God, release your healing virtue right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for complete healing, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise and we give you glory. We count it as done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for releasing your healing virtue, God. Thank you for your resurrection power right now. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Thank you right now. Thank you. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. God, we thank you for the healing. Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you, God, for the restoration. Thank you for saving us. God, and we give you glory and we give you praise. Let all God's people say amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. You may be seated. We have a quick an announcement before we bishop. Praise God. Coming up. Praise God. Amen. Um, we have something that we need to do today. And it's it's never an easy thing to do, but we are so honored to 
that the relationship, when you have a relationship with people, like if you're in the military, you know, you go to a new station, you still stay connected, even though you're not in the same place of fellowship. So today we're asking for Brother Brandon and Sister Shanae to come on over here. Come on over. Come on over. Yeah. Yeah. So they can see you on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, well, him and I had lunch together a while back. I don't remember, a couple of weeks back. Yeah. A couple of weeks back. And she, he shared with God is doing some things in his life and doing some moves. And one of those things is God is um, putting his heart for him to, him and the family to leave True Vine. And it's not a, a mean thing. It's not, I don't like what you're doing, that type of thing. It's, he's following God's direction. And anytime you, somebody say, God said, I ain't crazy enough to go against God. So we, we told him we're going to send them off with a blessing and pray for them and all of the good things. But so before we pray, we're going to ask them to have some words. So who's going to speak? I knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she did so low. Y'all didn't see she was down. <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote down a couple of things. Um, so I just go ahead and read what I wrote. Uh, growing up, we started in the Kojic church. Um, I learned how to jump and shout and uh, put the scripture to music. But it was also the beginning of my relationship with God. I didn't know the person of Jesus. I grew up being afraid of God. His love for me wasn't often talked about. It was more rules and regulations, religion. You do this or God will burn your house down, give you cancer. So I was afraid of God, but I had my fire insurance and I knew I was entering the gates when I died, but that was only half the picture. As my mother and father began to grow in their knowledge of the word and gain new insight into what it meant to live a normal Christian life, that led them to a young, handsome pastor that was teaching from a small building at St. Philip's College. <laughs> this is where the foundation of my Christian walk was poured and I discovered the revelation of God's love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So the objective isn't about the rules and regulations. It's about God sharing his love for us first. That is what we found at True Vine. God's love for me. My relationship with Jesus began to grow. I learned how to recognize his voice. And it started off as something. Something told me not to go to that person's house. <laughs> something told me to grab my keys before I left. But now I know and hear his voice clearly. And part of the process of following Jesus is that he doesn't always go in the direction that you think or necessarily want to go. But you have a choice to make. Are you going to be comfortable and safe, or are you going to follow Jesus into the storm? See, the storm doesn't matter when you're walking with the one that created it. I don't need to know the future. I just need to know that I'm walking with Jesus. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. You can't actually leave or join a church. You come under agreement with the shepherd. This isn't goodbye. It's a see you later. My number is the same, and don't go deleting my number out your phone. <laughs> I love y'all, and I thank y'all for all the words and gifts and prayer, and most of all, the growth that I've had here at True Vine. I am the person I am today because of this church. Now you gotta understand, we've known Brandon since Brandon was in middle school. Before that. Before that. Yes, yeah. yes, he was in elementary. Yeah, along with Steve. Yeah. And we know Shanae. Shanae was you weren't quite we weren't quite in high school yet either. 14, 14. Yeah. And some of y'all may or may not know Shanae lived with us for a while. So this this is not um easy for us to watch them walk away. 
But at the same time, we will not ever stand in the way of, a, of being obedient to God. I just preached about rebellious people. And I don't ever want to see them walk in rebelliousness. Neither do I want to be a hand in stopping what God has for them. I don't know what God has for them, but we just pray God's blessings, God's choices, wishes over them. So we're going to pray for them before they walk out and get the Earl. So we can anoint them. Where's uh, Tiana? There she is. Tiana and Bradley. But well, I'm going with Tiana. Tiana was a little baby. And I used to put her asleep on my chest. She used to, she used to give her mama fits. <laughs> but when I got a hold of Tiana, put her on my chest, she just went straight to sleep. And we have a special bond, her and I. So it's not like, you know, we were we parting ways because it was some evil intent, what, evil words, harsh words. That's not none of that. This is a peaceful, I wish I could change y'all's mind, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it, we, we understand. We understand what God is doing, and you have to follow God's word. And yeah. wait, wait, wait. But if you bring, tell you come back, come back. Oh, we coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you tell us to come back, <laughs> let me tell you. So I would say one more thing about Shane. Shane had the hardest time with barriers. If she hugged you, it was kind of, you know, in one hand. Now Shane hugs with two hands. That's the work of God. <laughs> That's a major work of God. No. Okay. We can pray. Oh, yes. And Tiana made me a cake yesterday and brought it to my house. A red velvet cake. Now, I brought some cake in the back there. Um, it's a cowboy cake. And I saved the star for Pastor Jeff. That's just it's for you. It's just for you. <laughs> Don't nobody touch that star but him. That's for him. But that red velvet cake is at home. Yeah, that's for the family. That's for us. Well, for me. <laughs> so she, she's a turning into a, a wonderful chef and bakery specialist. One day I'm look up on TV, I'm going to see her face. Yeah, amen. Miss Bradley, her and I got to have a conversation because she just, she just seemed to be. Mm. She's a pandemic baby. Pandemic. Oh, <laughs> 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 but, but we gotta get to agreement anyway. You wanna lay, lay hands on? Let's pray. Let's go. Let's go. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray now for Brandon, Shanae, and the whole entire family. God, that your your they following your word and following his, your instructions. We don't know all that is that you have for them. And it's not important that we know. It's important that they follow you. Yeah. Abraham left and started walking, didn't know exactly where he was going, but you directed him. So God, we trust the God that they love, the God that we love, that you guide them in the ways you want them to go. We thank you for the years they've been with us and the help they have been to us, the encouragement they have been to us, not just us, but to, to True Vine family. We thank you that when we ask them to do something, they said yes. Let that spirit of yes be with them wherever you lead them. That when they go into the ch that church, whatever the church may be, and go with the same spirit of yes. That they've come to be a blessing to that ministry, be a blessing to the pastor. And, and above all, God, whatever you have for them, let the windows of heaven open up yeah. and cause them to be uh, doubled and quadrupled uh, exponentially, God because they are following your direction. We pray nothing but blessings upon their life and upon wherever the journey may take them. Let the journey be smooth because you say you go before them, make the crooked way straight and the high places low. So we pray now that this journey will be joyful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And the letter will be coming. Yeah. Normally we send them with a letter, but since they don't know exactly where they're going, they get the letter later on. All right. All right, that was not easy for me. I did it without crying. Did it without crying. All right, and I, I, you know what? Can we just do this one more ways? Um, when we do the the, the youth um, next month, I know you're gonna you're gonna come back. So if y'all want to do expressions of love, when was that gonna be? The fourth Sunday. Of June. The fourth Sunday of June. That would be a time for us to send them out properly. Um, we were kind of hoping that they would change their mind. Try not to look at him. <laughs> and But we want to send you off properly. And so the fourth Sunday in June, we'll, we'll do a nice little shing ding. All right.
That I learned that from good old country boy, Ching Ding. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And we sing